what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make three different types of a super moist, large format muffin at home. So the next time you wanna roll out of bed on a Saturday and make yourself dessert for breakfast, you're covered. First muffin, the classic blueberry. It's sweet, it's tart, it's fruity, and all around just my favorite muffin. The process for all these muffins is gonna be super simple, by the way. We just need two bowls, one for wet and one for dry. Into the wet bowl goes 210 grams of sugar, two large eggs, two egg yolks, because if we had too much white in here, things would be just a little bit too firm. That extra protein tends to get into the way of luxury. Next, I'm gonna grab my whisk and stir the sugar and eggs up to combine. Stirring these two together right now helps them both incorporate easier into the other wet stuff. Speaking of which, 225 grams of full fat sour cream goes in next, followed by 150 grams of buttermilk, three grams of vanilla extract, 50 grams of neutral oil, I'm using a light colored olive oil, followed by 50 grams of melted butter that has been cooled down. From here, I'm gonna grab my whisk and stir everything up until it's well combined. And I'll mention that this blueberry muffin is the only muffin in this video with butter in it. Generally speaking, using oil is gonna lead to a moister muffin overall, and that's what we want, but blueberry with all oil really lacked a certain amount of depth of flavor that I feel butter brought. So I went with a 50-50 blend of butter to oil. Once all the wet ingredients are stirred up, I'm gonna set that aside and then grab my second bowl and into that measure 375 grams of all-purpose flour, eight grams of salt, 12 grams of baking powder, and four grams of baking soda. From there, I'm gonna whisk up the dry ingredients to combine and then I'm gonna drop in all of the wet. I wanna mention that all of the muffins in this video are gonna follow a very similar process and formula and that's because I wanted to keep things super simple and avoid using a stand mixer. If you've got two bowls, you can make all of the muffins in this video. Once the wet ingredients are on top of the dry, in goes 280 grams of fresh blueberries, but frozen blueberries will work here almost exactly the same, and if that's what you have, let it rip. Now, with a rubber spatula, I'm gonna fold everything together to fully hydrate the dry ingredients, and the goal here is to do that the minimum number of times. If we overwork the gluten, we're gonna have a tough muffin with no luxury, so try not to stir this more than, say, 20 times total. Once everything's all stirred up and looking fully hydrated like this, now it's time to talk about what to bake these muffins in. Of course, there's the classic 12-count muffin pan that I think most of you guys probably have at home. And yes, this recipe will make exactly 12 muffins when you scale it out to about 110 grams, but that's not jumbo, bro. So I'm not going to use it. I've also got this silicone muffin pan that I got online because it was labeled perfect for jumbo muffins and it sucks. The silicone is not a good conductor of heat and this leads to soft spots and underbaked muffins. This one is not an option. I really prefer this deeper one. This pan gave me that bakery quality look that I really wanted. So I decided to go with it for the video. These are gonna get lined with these little rosette papers that also contribute to that pro bakery look. And if you want this pan and these muffin papers, I will link them in the description below. Once these are all situated into the pan, we're gonna grab some pan spray and hit each paper with a little spray for good measure. And now we're gonna fill up each cup with about 225 grams of muffin mix. Personally, I like to scale mine out exactly by zeroing out the batter bowl on my gram scale and then scooping it out till it reads negative 225 like this. Certainly, you don't need to be a nerd about it like me. You can just eyeball it. I've designed all three of these recipes to be six muffins at about 225 grams each, so it should work out naturally. Once that pan's all filled up with lemon batter, we're gonna top each muffin with a very generous pinch of lemon sugar. For that, I took 100 grams of sugar in the raw and added two lemons worth of zest. I got all that zest from my microplane, of course, and then I stirred everything together. Each muffin's gonna get about a solid tablespoon of that on top because it's gonna bring a very nice aromatic crunch to the top side of these muffins. Once those are all topped up, I'm gonna load these into an oven that I preheated to 350F or 176C and bake them for 30 to 32 minutes. I tried just about every temperature between 350 and 425F to see if I could get a higher rise on these muffin tops. And it turns out every temperature above 350F led to dry muffins. While these finish baking, I wanna take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people that either want to learn something new or maybe wanna go deeper with a skill that they already have. One of the things I really like about Skillshare is that you can really just follow your curiosity, kind of like I would with YouTube videos, except for on Skillshare, there's no ads or crazy clickbait. It's all just based around me learning cool stuff. I honestly wish I had known about MKBHD's course on how to script and shoot YouTube videos 16 months ago when I first started, because Marquez is a total pro and a great teacher and really could have helped make my videos so much better. But if making YouTube videos isn't your thing, try portrait photography or web development. Those sound pretty fun for 
other people. They're always adding new courses at every level from a total beginner to total pro. And if you wanna give Skillshare a try, click the link in my description. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to do that will get their first month free. That's a great deal. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. After 30 minutes in the oven, we're gonna pull these out and take a look. As you can see, we've got a nice round muffin top and all of that coarse lemon sugar has now turned into a really nice crust. From here, we still have to test to see if these muffins are done. And for that, I'm gonna use a cake tester, put it in all the way down through the center and when I pull it out, it's clean and that means we're good to go. The last step here is to pop these out of this hot metal pan right away to stop any carryover cooking that might dry these out. And when I cut into them, you can see these look really dynamic and there is plenty of contrast between the jammy blueberry spots and the background of moist vanilla muffin. Mmm. This is everything that you could want in a blueberry muffin, essentially. It's super moist, but it's not cake. It's definitely just a little bit different. There's some nice acidity from the blueberries. There is a little bit of sweetness, but it's totally balanced by the acidity from the sour cream. And yeah, me likey. Mm. But that's not all. The next muffin is indulgent and barely allowable as breakfast, the double chocolate muffin. For that, we're back at the medium bowl and into that I'm gonna measure out the wet ingredients. In goes two whole large eggs, two egg yolks, those come out a lot easier when they're not broken, by the way. And then 300 grams of sugar. That gets whisked up. And then in goes 100 grams of oil, 100 grams of buttermilk, 340 grams of sour cream, and four grams of vanilla extract. All the wet ingredients are gonna get whisked up real quick to combine. And then I'm gonna set that aside to get the dry measured out. Into that bowl goes 340 grams of all-purpose flour, eight grams of salt, 12 grams of baking powder, and four grams of baking soda. We'll whisk that to combine, and then the wet ingredients go on top. And oh yeah, 50 grams of cocoa powder. I was kind of distracted when adding the dry ingredients, looking at my camera's little flippy screen, but cocoa really needs to get stirred up with the dry ingredients, and we will see why later on. On top of the cocoa comes 110 grams of chopped dark-ish baking chocolate. This stuff is 70% cacao. This is the same stuff I like to use for my chocolate chip cookies, but chocolate chips or chocolate chunks will also work here really well. Once this stuff is roughly chopped up into, let's say, quarter-inch to half-inch size chunks, now it's ready for the batter. And just like with the blueberries, we're gonna use rubber spatula to fold everything together and until there are no dry spots like this. From there, we're gonna scoop a rough 225 grams into each little pan sprayed muffin wrapper and then top each muffin with a strong pinch of chopped chocolate. Once recovered, I'm gonna load this into a 350F 176C oven and bake it for 30 to 32 minutes. Now, cut all that fun time-lapse footage of these muffins doming up hard in the oven. That looks fun. 30 minutes later, we're gonna pull these out and check them for doneness. The cake tester goes in and it comes out clean. These are all the way baked. Now I'm gonna move these over to a wire rack so they don't continue to carry over cook. And once they've cooled down and I cut into them, you can see they look really dope. But since we didn't mix the cocoa in with the flour earlier, there are a few spots where that white flour does show through. Again, there's gonna be no impact on quality or edibility here. It's just a valuable lesson in terms of aesthetics. You gotta mix your cocoa with your flour. Overall, I'm so proud of this result. It took me a lot of tries to get to something so moist and delicious. Let's taste it real quick. This is quite fudgy. Essentially, it's chocolate cake, let's be honest. You can hear it in the back of my throat. It sounds like chocolate cake, like that's the... <laughs> it's dark, very rich, but not overly sweet. That's what makes this a muffin and not a cake. I think it's perfectly in balance. Again, that sour cream brings tons of fat to the table, so it's very luxurious and very moist, which is exactly what you want from a chocolate muffin. Let's make another one. Let's do it. This time, another classic banana walnut. Back to the bowl. Two eggs go in, two yolks go in. Scrape out the yolks if they broke. Dang it. Then 210 grams of dark brown sugar. Version 1.0 and 2.0 had white sugar and it just didn't have the depth of flavor that I needed to carry a muffin like this. The whisk goes in to stir together the sugar and the eggs. And then I'm gonna measure in 40 grams of molasses. That's gonna double down on that moody vibe we're going for with the brown sugar. 100 grams of oil, 100 grams of buttermilk, 280 grams of sour cream, four grams of vanilla extract, 260 grams or roughly two whole large bananas that I've mashed up. I think it's obvious, but I wanna mention, use a very, very ripe, banana here. These were aged at least five to six days in my pantry. They've got nice black spots on them and that's crucial for success. Once all the wets are in the bowl, we're going to come back and whisk that all up to combine. You'll see it looks really pretty at first and then it looks very brown. Yuck. 
Next up, the dry ingredients. These are gonna be the exact same as they were for the chocolate muffin. 340 all-purpose flour, eight salt, 12 powder, four soda. I'm also gonna add in 110 grams of toasted walnuts here. I really wouldn't recommend putting raw nuts into any baked good, basically. A raw nut is really only gonna bring texture. Toasting brings a lot more depth of flavor. I toasted these walnuts at 350F 176C for about 15 minutes until they were light golden brown all the way through and evenly toasted. In they go. Now I'll whisk the dry up to combine and then pour in the brown and fold everything up. As that comes together, I want to take a real quick second to pay homage to the actual hero of these muffins, and that's sour cream. Initially, all of the non-egg moisture in these muffins was buttermilk, and I did a few rounds of tests, and those muffins were really just okay. All the added fat from that sour cream brings so much more moisture to these muffins, and it also makes the batter just a little bit thicker, and as a result, the muffins tend to rise higher in the oven. It's a win-win. Once that's all stirred up to combine, you know what's coming next. We're gonna paper the pan, spray those papes, and then drop in 225 grams-ish of batter into each hole. Then we're gonna top these muffins with just a little flourish of toasty walnuts on top for looks. Then I'm gonna load them into a 350F 176C oven and bake them for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes in the oven, we're gonna pull these out and check them for doneness. The cake tester goes in and they're done. The banana nut is one of my all-time favorite baked goods, but the tricky part here is always threading the needle on sweetness. When you put fruit into a bread like this, you can really end up with something kind of syrupy and exhaustingly sweet to eat. I think the combo of molasses and brown sugar in contrast with a bunch of sour cream really gives us the balance that we're looking for. This looks great. Let's give it a taste. Mm. This is an absolute delight. There is a bunch of texture in here from all those walnuts. It tastes super banana-y and Lauren doesn't want me to say moist anymore in this video, but check it out. It is moist as hell. Guess what? I know what you're thinking. Uh, Brian, you covered it all. What other muffins could we possibly look at? Well, great question. Uh, it's fall and now I wanna show you how to make this muffin, banana nut, into yet another delicious muffin, the pumpkin spice nut muffin. I'm a nut for nuts. The formula here is exactly the same as the banana muffin, except for that instead of molasses, we're using 40 grams of maple syrup, and instead of banana, we're using pumpkin. Well, roasted butternut squash to be exact. I cut the squash in half, seeded it out, and then baked it in the oven, 350F, for 30 to 40 minutes until it was roasty and fully tender. After it cooled off, we came back and shredded out all that flesh. This is pretty much an analog for the stuff that comes in the can. Most of that stuff is made from butternut, it turns out. Also, I snuck in five grams of pumpkin spice into the mix here and replaced the toasted walnuts with an equal amount of toasted pecans. I'm gonna stir everything up until it's a gloppy orangish brown, load it into the pan, and then load that into the oven for 30 minutes. And you guys, tis the season for pump spice. Don't deny yourself any opportunity for shallow seasonal nostalgia. In all seriousness though, I spent a lot of time developing these muffin formulas and I really hope you guys put them to good use. A moist, large, decadent muffin like this is an absurd but really delicious way to start your day, especially when you have a seasonally appropriate latte in hand. Let's eat this thing. 